Why? All right, you are in the zone with Cranky and the Swag Man. Unfortunately, we have um, we we had a couple of problems in the last week or so, uh, or the last couple of weeks, which uh, led to us being unable to record. But that has just about been solved. One third of us is still having issues, um, but other than that, we're fucking perfect. We are back on track. So. I'm going to go ahead with the disclaimer, and then uh, uh, Swagman's going to introduce the uh, the topic. That's so, um, where is my disclaimer? Where's my... <laughs> <laughs> you, you have one week off, and he forgets all the lines. <laughs> all right. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed in this podcast are purely those of the individuals voicing them and do not represent the values of the sponsors or the platforms on which this podcast is hosted. All right, let's put that away and go back to our usual shit talk. That sounds good. So today's episode we are going for is all about companies cutting corners as well as Father's Day. And uh, while we're trying to navigate that, I'm trying to work out why our Facebook Live is not working. So oh. for some reason, we are not live on Facebook. And I am unsure as to why. Mm. I don't really want to hit the live button on the Facebook page, uh, page in case it uh, <laughs> well, cuts the audio here. It's working perfectly well on the In The Zone page. It's working well on my personal profile. It's working well on Twitch. And it's working on YouTube. Interesting. So Very yeah. interesting. Maybe this is an obstacle we can, we can we overcome. We will figure in, that out in the uh, coming week. Time. So hopefully people will see the post we've just put up and <laughs> and join that way just by clicking the link. I've put an audience link on our page, so mm. we should be able to hopefully see if anybody joins it uh, just by clicking but the link. We are also live on TikTok for the first time. TikTok? And yeah, no TikTok's, way. TikTok's doing TikTok. pretty well. Yeah, so far we've got two solid viewers. And I have yeah. someone who's already said, can I ask you a question? I feel Go like for that's it. going to be a bad bad idea. Anyway, ask me the question, Verisica, and then we're going to get straight back to the subject. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always cat and mouse with who, who joins <laughs> these lives. It's like, can I ask a question? Well, you can ask, but whether we're going to answer it is another question. <laughs> <laughs> We may just go plead the fifth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, plead the fifth. Give, we're gonna, we're time. gonna, we're gonna remain silent on this one. But anyway, while Verisica gets their uh, their proverbial shit together and finally asks a question, we're going to say Happy Father's Day to everybody out there listening. Yes. Um, today, this is the Father's Day episode. Um, and I, and yeah. I, I personally had a pretty good one. What about you, Swagman? Yeah, that was pretty good. So I got woken up with uh, breakfast in bed and my coffee, and then the kids promptly going and saying, "Here, Dad, here's presents. Open up the presents." <laughs> so <laughs> more, more like they wanted to open up the presents for me. <laughs> it was more, more that. Ah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. But they're like, "You've got to read the card first, Dad. You can't open the presents. You've got to read the card." <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, I'll read the card first." <laughs> Uh, and all, you can only imagine trying to read a seven-year-old's handwriting. <laughs> it, it's all about the card at that point. I mean, you know the present they got you is some $7 piece of shit from school. Um, they actually yeah. put they actually put effort into the card. That's what the, yeah, that's what's that, important to them. That's the important part is, is the card. It's It's got some effort into it. And uh, uh, my wife actually took them out. Um, hmm. To the to the shop and they got presents. I need to oh, put okay. my phone on silent. And I got a couple <laughs> of bottles of cologne and um, yeah. And we also Ooh, went out fancy for lunch. Pants. Oh yeah, yeah. We went out for lunch. <laughs> went to the pub for lunch because I had this lovely pub card with a voucher on it, and I thought, Oh, it. neato. <laughs> we'll do oh, that. Shit, so, I probably um, got one too. Yeah. Then mm. the wife is like, oh, you know. We'll go to the movies later on or something. So we're probably going to go to the movies or something like that after the mm -hmm. uh, live as well. I was also meant to have the CEO of Swag HQ joining us today, but he is still with his family. 
Great sponsor um, of the show, Swag. Great, great sponsor of the show. And he was going to dive into a bit more about Swag and what it is and all that sort of jazz. Swag, so, uh, swag are literally the ones keeping the lights on here at the moment. Yeah, quite literally keeping the lights on. <laughs> I keep them keeping the mics warm. <laughs> yep, yep, so, yep. Yeah, uh, we're still not live on Facebook for some reason. I don't know what's going on there, so that's another feature we're going to have to figure out. It says we're live in the live stream, but it's not live, if that makes sense. Uh, let me check. Let me check my phone, see if it's come up with anything. What's happening here, but Shonky Traffic Controllers. So that's the page I'm talking about, peeps, for those that are listening. Um, and what that is, is uh, it, it's just about posting shonky traffic controllers and the companies that are going around cutting corners and just doing dumb shit. <laughs> like, if you're doing dumb shit and you own a traffic control company, uh, believe it or not, you're probably going to find yourself on this page. And <laughs> over the last two months, I think we've had this page up now. Um, it has grown to 556 members and nearly every hour between myself and Crank, we're probably accepting eight to ten people an hour. Um, How long have we had it up? It's been up for like a month now and we've got 556 yeah, members two, already. Yeah, yeah, 556 members and it, it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing. Um, it's one of those, it just, it just keeps going. I don't know what's happening. That's um, such... Shonky traffic controls. Go ahead and like that on Facebook right now. Yes, go jump in but there. Jump it, in. Jump I consider in. it. I consider it an achievement of our page, right? That we've already had to ban someone. Yeah. Tell 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 everyone about that. Oh, far out that guy. He um one of the one of the pictures got got uploaded and it turned out it was someone who was already a member now here's the thing if you are a member of a group like that on facebook odds are at some point you're probably going to see a picture of yourself right? yeah <laughs> this that's guy, gonna, it's gonna happen he got so cut up about it he was emailing us he was um putting up comments he kept reporting the same picture over and over eventually we did end up having to get rid of it and i think we got rid of him too yeah i haven't seen him at all since since then, so it's um I'm guessing that yeah, he's yeah, he's not he's not with us. He's either left or we've banned him from the page completely. Um, <laughs> but he wasn't oh. too happy. I think his comment was like, Oh yeah, I lost my job because of this post. It's like uh and then somebody else commented saying, No, you lost your job prior to this post because you're acting like an mm, idiot in mm. front of the tier one company. Now I can only imagine they're talking about a FIFO site. And if no. you act like a there wasn't no, a FIFO it's, site. It's a it's a Sydney site. It's a Sydney site. Yeah. I know um, the com I know the company that guy worked for. Um and and they are one of the companies that we're gonna be talking about today. Um they do like to cut a few corners. Oh, brilliant. That's I've worked, what we want. I've worked for them. <laughs> You've worked for them. Yeah, yeah. And Even they're pretty better. much they're pretty much exclusively Sydney, unless they've changed a lot of things and somehow um expanded to Newcastle, which I don't think will ever happen because traffic logistics analysis seem to have Newcastle all to themselves. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, oh, but that is a nice little segue to our topic for the day. <laughs> it is. Uh, just ignore me right now. I am. I've just created the event. What I'm going mm. to attempt to do through our Facebook while <laughs> we are live here is hit the go live button, and hopefully it doesn't disconnect from here. Otherwise, I'm sure you'll let me know. Well, um. That just looks like I have a dick in my face. Uh, <laughs> You've got a what in your face? Do try. Do, do I pulled the microphone down a bit further. No. Um, what was I going to say? Try try just attaching the audience link to it and let people join like that, I guess. Yeah, so I've attached the audience link, and I'm going to start sharing the page as well. So they're going to see your face and whatever we do on this end. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> try that, and now I'm going to hit go live. Let's see what happens. If I disconnect, yeah. please let me know. <laughs> Well, right. I'll try to let you know. I'll see how quickly I cotton <laughs> onto it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I don't, I don't know how this is going to work, what's going to happen, mm. but I'm going to give this a crack to be able to go live. Ah, okay, cool. Well, anyway, um, our, our topic for today, once again, is TC companies that cut corners yes. and try to get away with it and the ways they try to get away with it. Not just TC companies as well. Any any companies that are sort of within the the construction or mining or, or just generally companies that a traffic controller would have to deal with at some yes. point. So, um, uh, like I said, my my favorite was the the previous company I worked for. They've since closed their doors. Old mates had to sell the business because he ran it that badly. No um, joking. Oh yeah, that was that company you were saying in another episode. Was it that did. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the guy who who um used to come up to his workers on uh, on the day after payday and ask if they got <laughs> twenty bucks for him to put through the pokies. <laughs> oh come on. That's just insane. That is honestly uh, oh, and I've, and I've it... heard of bosses going to extreme lengths to to save money, but never to go to their employees and go, "Hey, spot me a 20. <laughs> like, Bum, bumming a twenty off one of your workers is just, <laughs> just bad. Yeah, that 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 takes the cake. And um, what's even worse is uh, if they're taking their money and going to the ca- casino with it, <laughs> not not even <laughs> for any other use. It's like. I'm not short on milk and bread. I just want to go to the casino and pop a 20 in the machine. I don't even uh, think he was going to the casino. I think he was just going down to the local pub. He was just going to the pokies. <laughs> oh, wow. Putting in machines that are already hijacked enough with um, uh, with, with rigness. You can't win on the pub, <laughs> pub pokies. It, no, it, no. I've never seen one go off since I've been going to the pub. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I can't can't see how that works. Um, other shonky traffic control companies I've seen, I can't mention mm. names as much as I would love to, um, sending their, their uh, workers out in the field, uh, and I've mentioned it multiple times, where they're just newly trained. Uh, yep, yep. And there's been a few posts put on our shonky traffic control page as well as well as in the zone of just traffic control companies who take zero safety in, into it. And they don't even set up a site properly. Like, how's the, um, the site set up for what looks to be a main roads vehicle <laughs> uh, with a bunch of cones and a workman ahead? Now, he's got there, – there's no pre-advanced warning. It's – He's chucked about what, uh, from what I can see, three, four, five, six cones out, and the symbolic for workmen working and just working on a traffic light with his with his hazard lights and beacon going. That's it. That's his setup. There, there's no traffic control. There's no thought. I can't even understand how this is a legal setup. Um, is this one yeah. of your blokes' setups? Is this a Sydney? Is it? It doesn't look like it's a Perth one. It looks like it might be an Eastern States main roads worker. I can't see anything. Yeah, it's on the Shonky traffic controls. It's probably only uh, it's just under my Father's Day post, and that's the kind of shit that we're trying to stamp out because that's the kind of setup and. Not only that, he's got no protection on the opposite side of him either. So if a car was to clip that ladder, he would just fall off the ladder, like quite easily fall off the ladder. Um, It's probably one of the worst setups I've come across, other than the other post where the guy is just standing with a stop bat. (laughs) Just there's no warning signs, there's no nothing. It's just stop bat peeking out from behind the car. (laughs) <laughs> with with slow on it, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, how that is even 
like, are they working on a house there? Is it just someone pulling the piss? That that's the kind of shit that needs to be stamped out. Like it's it's just not becoming any any better in the industry. It's just getting worse. No, no, it's no. getting worse. It's, it's getting, getting worse. There are um, there are so many so many companies and just people, builders and whatnot, getting away with this stuff that they they're giving up. Oh, they're giving up. Don't they... even get me started on builders. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I am quite literally building a house right now. Yep. And they're just too lazy to order their own skip bin. Hey, don't worry, because uh, another company around the corner's got their bin. We'll just go dump all our shit into their bin. Yeah, that doesn't happen on my site. I grab their shit and I take it back to the property and I dump it in front of their verge or I put it on the verge and call the council and say, hey, come investigate because this shit mm, was dumped mm. in our bin again. I've chucked it on the verge <laughs> for you. It, it yeah. is beyond a joke. The corners that they're cutting, even the company I'm building with currently, um, we've got uh, non-compliance, which is... It's not standard non-compliance. It's engineering non-compliance, which means the trains that have come out to site have Mm. not followed what the engineer has said to do. Because they haven't followed what the engineer has said to do, it falls into a non-compliance bracket. And yeah, yeah. That can lead the council to saying, okay, knock the house down, knock that patio down, knock down that brick wall. It doesn't meet the engineering standards. Or worse, my roof could cave in. So I've had four reports of that. I won't mention who the building company is just yet, but I will after the house has been built. Because <laughs> I still <laughs> want my keys. <laughs> so. It is shonky. There is. It's not only shonky traffic control going on. It's just. It's it's, shonky everywhere. It's It's shonky everywhere at the moment. Like it's Perth is getting worse. I don't know what Sydney, what it like, what it's like over there in Sydney, but it seems to be getting worse. There's, I I seen a council worker doing the lawn mowing. You know how they lawn mow down the middle of the verges? And usually you will have a traffic control car there to, to pull cars, slow them up, you know, or merge them into another lane to say, hey, this lane's being used. Yeah, this, yeah. This guy was just like, fuck the rules. <laughs> fuck the rules and <laughs> we'll just do what we want to do because uh, I'm invincible. So he was just casually mowing down the centre of the bloody main road uh, mm, which, mm. which is a seventy eighty zone in the area with no traffic control at all. It's just getting worse. It's like, why would you take your life in your own hands like that? Like, car clips gonna... the curb, drunk driver, you know, whatever. And so, I've yeah. I've seen it happening too. Yeah, it's it it's does awful. happen. It's 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 an awful thing to have happen, but, and you never know what kind of reason either. Someone. But, Someone yeah. could uh, come down there in in the middle of the in the middle of the day and have some sort of diabetic attack or something like that. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. And and the whole reason that the TMAs and traffic control is there is to prevent that. The perfect example mm. is on mm. the thirtieth of July. I put a post up in the uh, Shonky traffic controllers, um, which was only just released as well. Uh, yeah. Of a vehicle yeah. smashed into a back of a TMA. Yeah, you did. And, and that there is the prime reason you need a TMA when doing this verge side shit because quite clearly they were doing night works here, so it must have been like a Western mm. Power or a water court job or something like that. But this is the vehicles they also use when they're doing the mowing down the centre of the lanes as well. They use these TMA vehicles with the, um, with the Scorpion on the back. And yeah. you can see how hard that vehicle hit. He must be doing at least 80-odd. 80 plus, and he smashed into the back of that. And you can see the damage that's caused to the to his front of his vehicle, and it's only caused damage to the Scorpion. Now, that driver would have got a sure jolt in that, um, and that would have given him a bit of a, you know, what the hell is going have, on situation. He would have been <laughs> bounced off his ass, that's for sure. But Oh, yeah, but. 100%. The, the truck would have been though. okay and he would have been alive. And that's the exact reason why you need to hire these trucks 
spend a little bit more money. Yeah. Don't be a tight ass. Um, because imagine, workers. imagine if that TMA had been not the TMA, but a dude on a on a ride on lawnmower. The ride on lawnmower would have wouldn't have given him much protection. Well, here's how that plays out: if you deliberately ignore the safety measures that are available to you for funding or costs or whatever. When it goes to court, if that worker has died, you can be sure as hell that family is going to sue. And the first question the judge is going to ask, that is the picture. <laughs> Cranky's just put the picture up of the TMA completely smashed up. That is yep, the exact yep. reason why you use them. Um, but, yeah, you can be sure as hell the first question a judge is going to ask is, what safety measures did you have in place? And if you say, oh, I didn't have any uh, due to costs and all that, you've lost your case. Straight up, you've lost. Um, you had the resources there to use. You'd done a job that you knew was dangerous because you're dealing with the public. You will go in for involuntary manslaughter. You'll go in for killing somebody, whatever they yeah. want to label yeah. you as in court and what you're charged with. Companies these days just think they can get away with it. Just throw a greenie in the field. Ah, oh, no, don't worry about it. She'll be right. Don't worry about traffic control. We don't need them. It's mm. not that you don't need us because you've done it a hundred times. It's that one percent time that it does happen and you don't have it and you kill someone. Like then, where are you? What are you doing after that point? So yeah, exactly. Or it's like like old mate. Um... Stopping, stopping traffic basically with his hand and no signage <laughs> up on the fucking Pacific Highway or something like that. Yeah, it it becomes a point of, um, like why roll the dice? Why why are mm. you so stupid mm. about it? Um, and there's other companies out there that do it too. It's not just traffic control companies that have done it. I've I've been on some major mine sites. Um, and they cut corners, like one rule for them, one rule for us. So what's in place on a mine site isn't necessary what they'll follow when shit hits the fan. It's how do we get out of this? Um, yeah, we were meant to do this, but we didn't follow our own rules and shit went south. You know, And that's yeah. the cost of cutting corners. Um, people get hurt, killed, um, severely injured to the point where they're on workers' comp or... You know, it puts major liabilities in, in play. Like the the most massive one I guess you could look at is um, a situation where it was a Rio Tinto site, I believe, in Monodelphus, uh, and they set one of their conveyor belts on fire. <laughs> uh, it's well published in the news, so that's why we can mm. talk about it. It's well published in the newspapers. It's uh, It cost them millions of dollars. Here's the funny side. Yeah. Rio and there Rio is always Tinto. a funny side. <laughs> Rio Tinto, or whichever company it was, I believe it was Rio, then rehired Monodelphus to fix the problem at more of the cost. So they gave the company, <laughs> Monodelphus, yeah. more money, paid them extra to then fix the problem. <laughs> so not only did they cause the damage, but by doing so, they got extra money put into the contract to fix the problem. Um, so oh, they made, my gosh. They actually made more <laughs> money by damaging the equipment, not the other way around. Mm. So, mm. Um, so that's, the that's lesson learned go. there <laughs> was if you fuck up, just rip them off again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just do it backwards. Do everything against the rules. Just light fires. Why not? <laughs> I believe there was a water issue or something like that that actually caused it because they were doing some grinding or some repairs i believe and mm, it got mm. too hot i think they were doing some welding um, or some blowtorch stuff like um what do you call it meg welding or something like that and it got too yeah, hot and yeah. the spark caught the conveyor belt which i believe had some <laughs> form of ignition some form of soil caught it bang caught fire the whole lot went up um and it was jumping from conveyor belt to conveyor belt and just kept through kept mm. rolling so by the time they caught it, it was too late. Shit, hey? Yeah, so you look it up, uh, Monodelphus, <laughs> Rio Tinto fire, it's, it's massive. Millions of dollars worth of damage done. Uh, yeah. So it's not yeah, even yeah. Re really uh, Rio Tinto's fault, it's more Monodelphus' fault. 
Pretty pretty much. It was more more mm. mono fault than anything, but it was also monos that warned them, said, Hey, we shouldn't do this, it's not the right conditions, we don't have the yeah. adequate water or our right. So it was a bit of blame on both sides. So I think it was fifty fifty and it dragged out for that long that I think Rio just went to fucking fix the problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So <laughs> But the other thing I wanted to talk about, just sort of mm. backtracking from our topic altogether, <clears> the fathers is the fathers that don't get to see their kids. Oh, yes, yeah. How messed up our court system is for that. Um, it has got to a point where you have to fight to see uh, to see your kids, uh, and it shouldn't be you know, fathers fighting to see the kids. Like, why are mothers making it so hard, like a spite thing? You're spiting the kids to, what, punish the father, spend thousands of dollars in court, spend mm. thousands of dollars on lawyers, which could have gone to the kids for what? And what's your benefit at the end of it? What are you gaining at the end of it other than clogging up the court system, making it that difficult for fathers to see their kids and there's no common sense. Even the lawyers have started scratching their head because they go, we don't even know why the system is this bad, but something needs to change. Um, even the child support system is pretty bad. I found out the other day they have a cap on how much child support you pay. Your maximum income is 200000 mm. but for that 200000 you will pay at a maximum if you've got say three kids under thirteen, it'll yeah. be sixty two and a half thousand dollars. So if you earn a million dollars, that's fine. The maximum that you'll pay is sixty sixty thousand sixty two thousand sixty two and a half thousand dollars. No, there's got to be some sort of some sort of uh, um. There's got to be some sort of uh, uh, limit. not limit. Um, special allowance for cases like that. Yeah, the the special allowance is you have over two hundred thousand dollar income. So here's sixty two and a half thousand taken away from that. <laughs> that's that's the special allowance if you've got three kids under thirteen. Mm. Um, the only way around that is uh, it's based on shared care. So it also yeah. comes into shared care. If you have fifty fifty, well, obviously you're not going to be paying sixty two and a half. It will vary. But you are punished all the way up until you earn two hundred thousand. If you earn over two hundred thousand, um, yeah, you you're going to be paying that sixty two and a half thousand if you're on that two hundred grand mark. I only found that out the other day because I'm not earning that kind of money. I I wish I could earn mm. that kind of money. The only way I earn that kind of money is going back to FIFO. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to go back to FIFO. I'm quite happily being my mum's carer at the moment, full time. Um, so it's uh, I'm taking a break from the workforce at this moment, um, spending a bit more time with the family, being home. We're also going through an IVF journey with the wife. Um, yeah, I've been um, I've been keeping up to date with all your with all your TikTok updates. Yeah, the TikTok is actually getting a lot of traction, like. We, I think we had a couple of hundred and now we've got like 6,500 and something, I think was the last count, or 6,254. Yeah. But every yeah. time we go on there or every other day, there's somebody new following us, another person's following. Just like our, our shunky traffic controllers, we've gone yeah. from like 40 to, and this is all organic growth as mm, well. This mm. is not, not paid for. There's no endorsements. There's nothing that's done in the background. I literally got the call from Cranky saying, hey, we should start this traffic controller, shonky traffic controllers. And I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, we've already yeah. got in the zone. Like, And then the second I posted the shonky traffic controllers, it was like every single second, it was just going up and up and up and up. By the following day, there was 100. The next day, 200. <laughs> then the three, then four. And then on the hour, it was like 20 people are now wanting to participate. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> like it's just gone off, um, which mm. is why I was also trying to go live as well because 
for some reason I can't get it to go live. So that's something we're going to have to figure out afterwards. Yeah, that is something. And we've got a pretty decent number of people who've scrolled through on TikTok. Um, oh, nice. It's not saying we have any active viewers at the moment, but I don't trust that number too well. No, so what because... happens is when they scroll, if they don't stay on there for a certain amount of time, it just won't register. Mm, that's why mm. that's why it's so tricky because a lot of these say there's no one watching, yet I'm looking at it and there's people watching. It's just our system is not picking it up. So if you are trying to chat to us in the chat log as well, you're not getting through, let us know via a message on the Shonky Traffic Controller's Facebook page. We will get yeah. notification of that and we will look into that problem as well. I've quite literally just gone to the page and we've already got another request for someone to join. So shout out to <laughs> Emily McCourt. Uh, your, Emily McCourt. You have just been approved for Shonky Traffic Control. Please bring your 266 friends across. And since we've been live, um, we now have 559 members. And we hate that. to spring this on you, but there's only a small membership fee of $5,000 a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 5000 a week. Um, <laughs> please send it straight to our PayPal account. <laughs> Um, watch those numbers just go. <laughs> all, the, all the more for Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Cybertruck. I was looking into that the other day. I was like, man, I wouldn't mind having a Cybertruck. Never mind, it's never coming to Australia. And for 150 grand, I'd rather that on my mortgage. It can't. <laughs> the Cybertruck is illegal in Australia. Yeah, it's left hand drive. It also doesn't have a driving shaft, I believe. It's because it's um, electronic, so it steers at the actual wheels, not via a column. It doesn't have a, a steering column uh, by yeah. some fucking weird law, right? And I don't know why. Um, I don't know why they felt the need to specify this, but every car sold in Australia has to have a steering column. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when when they wrote that law. When, were they were they specifically thinking ahead of time and they're like, hmm, someone's going to try and invent a car that doesn't have a steering column. Fuck that guy. I, I believe it all started from like when they first started releasing cars <laughs> and, and people got uh, engineering uh, happy and yeah, they just yeah. started <laughs> creating their own version of a vehicle. You had literally <laughs> people making their own gasoline. You had people mm -hmm. making vehicles that could run on vegetables. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> they, I would say there was some moronic moron who decided to create a vehicle without a steering column mm. somewhere in the past and then decided, fuck it. Uh, well, we're going to make that a law. <laughs> um, something clearly went wrong. I don't understand what could have gone so badly wrong because if the steering is working, yeah. it doesn't matter how it's turning the car as long as it's turning the car in a safe manner. Like that isn't going to cause injury to people. But for a vehicle to turn, it needs to have some form of mm. mechanical aid anyway. So and I what's mean, the problem? <laughs> steering steering columns throughout history have have killed more people than they've helped. So you know, so, yeah, the, the, the airbags the, these days kill people. <laughs> like, there's there's a reason why they call them the widow maker pole. Yeah, um, it, it, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then you look at the airbags. They go, oh, airbags! All the cars these days need airbags. Um, airbag on impact, a big puffy bag covered in powder coming out of your steering column or the side of your mm -hmm. door and you smash into something and it goes poof. Uh, if you're already in pain, you're, you're further in pain now. Not only are your eyes covered in shit, but if that's got into your eye, I can't imagine it's comfortable or causing any form of, yeah, comfort yeah, at all. Well, like, some... I don't want to crash to find out. <laughs> Wasn't that that stuff that got all those airbags recalled in 2015, I think it was. I think because it also had shards of metal inside <laughs> somehow leaking into the airbag. So when it was engaged, it was throwing splinters of metal in the people's faces. <laughs> it's like, oh, how did that happen? Like, oh, like. It'd be like being shot with a shotgun. Oh, it would have. It obviously killed people. But oh yeah, it did. 
you know, it's not going to, that they will never tell you the true figures of why they do this. They just go, oh, I need a recall. And then you mm, hear nothing mm. about it. The media won't release anything. Like, you got to ask yourself, why don't the media do anything around child support? There is such an uproar about it. Uh, there's an uproar with the family courts. Why are the media not every other week hassling the government to make change? Why is it that it takes a massive protest that shuts down the city, well, shuts down a street of the city or a massive park like we've got down in Perth and you'll yeah, have yeah. thousands of people down there before the media will go, oh, we want to go down there and invest. Like, why are the media not doing anything to help the situation? They're all entwined. I reckon there's some sort of conspiracy with the government making payment to them to stay away from certain topics or they gag them or, you know, threaten them in some way that Mm. silences the mainstream media from even coming close to consistently reporting it. Um, Because there's been so many serious situations of proven corruption within that child support system or situations where people have got voice recordings of agents threatening the father or the mother, the paying parent. Yeah, yeah. You never hear anything in the media. You don't hear a current affair doing anything, nothing. So until someone's jumping up and down, it's just a joke. But I think um, for, for a lot of women, and I say this because I had a mate who went through something similar to this. Um, his ex, His ex put him through absolute hell for this Mm. and it was purely because it was considered traditional yeah right that's right it's she believed that it was tradition for the woman to make it difficult for the man to see his kid what that's That's insane that was it like you hear some crazy ones like i just i if you have a bad breakup why take it out on the kids that's all I've got to ask. Why are you taking your frustrations and your anger out on the kids? What? Because it's going to hurt the father more, so you get mm. the pleasure of taking them through court. But all you're doing is clogging the system of people who really actually need the family court system. Yeah, like if yeah. there's a family that just want to generally get some court <laughs> orders in place so it's a smoother process, yeah. They've got to wait three, four, five months because the courts are that clogged up with bullshit cases that you've got to wait that period of time. I don't know how long you've got to wait over there in Sydney, but I know over here it took me six months to get a court date. You know, so in Perth, it, it's just a joke to get a court date. If you need to speak to a oh. judge, it takes time. Mm. Okay, uh, so so your missus did something similar then? Uh, my ex was your ex, sorry, so very, your, your yeah. Ex, yeah. Yeah, my ex made it very difficult, um, mm. and then my other ex made it so difficult that I was in court for six years. Yeah. <laughs> so, and over nothing, and they tried everything. They tried the restraining order. They they tried, oh, no, he's a, um, a pedophile, which I'm not. All this crap kept getting dragged yeah. into the court, yeah. and it was just delay tactic after delay tactic, because when you go to family court, they just turn around and go, oh, there's a criminal case going against for X, Y, Z. Oh, yep. there's a criminal case going against him for um, uh, a VRO. So then your family court case gets denied until or gets mm, delayed mm. until, you know, you sort out the criminal side of it. So when yep. they get proven, yep. you know, thrown out of court and having to go all the way down to Geraldton Court, mind you, and I live in yep. Perth, just to say the judge, I don't know what the hell this is all about. This is clearly to interfere with the court case going on in family court. The judge just turns around and goes, please provide evidence. It's not on him to provide evidence. It's on you. And she just turned around and went, oh, well, he lives in Perth. He could easily come down. And I said, really, I'm going to travel five, six hours just to drive past your house. Like, <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I I have better things to do with my okay. life. That's that's peak crazy right there. <laughs> uh, and then you have to go back to family court, <laughs> get the new court date, which should have mm, been released mm. in the first place, and then wait another three or four months or five months, depending on when they decide to slot you in. And by then, there's some new crazy thing that's come out. So then you fight <laughs> that one. Uh, it is a revolving circle. There is nothing to stop the problem. 
I and, saw I saw a car that looks like Swagman's car parked outside my local cafe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there, there's all sorts of stuff that came out. Um, it's it is a joke on how our system works in that regard. It needs fixed. We needs. When it comes to this election, I tell you what, I'm not voting Labor. I am not voting Liberal. Those dickheads can fight on the back benches between themselves. Mm-hmm. And I hope the rest of Australia actually goes, fuck these guys, had enough. You can throw all the fucking money you like at us every single election. Oh, we'll just throw money. Here's uh, $500, $600 for electricity costs. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, Western Power has just increased the bill by $200, $300. But don't worry, we'll give you a credit that covers that. So it makes <laughs> it look like they're giving you money. And really, they're just giving with one, taking with the other. You don't get that's, to actually see it in the account for a period of time. It's First like, bill yeah, comes in, um, t- I'll take your money, but after that, fuck off. Yeah, pretty much. It's uh, The government is a joke. When it comes to elections, you know damn well they're going to do whatever to throw money at it. And if they're the ones in power, they will. They'll throw money mm-hmm. at it. We want to buy your votes. That's all it is. We'll buy your votes. See, now, uh, see now why can why can the government throw money at stuff like this, but these uh, these traffic control companies can't? Yeah, well, that's what gets me. You spend so much money wanting to... Um, create a traffic control company you want to spend so mm-hmm. much money uh being the best known company in in australia or in sydney or in perth um and yet when it comes to safety it's like oh well this contract we've got we've only got x amount from the client so therefore we have to find somewhere to cut the, the mustard yeah well, yeah well then don't do business with them. If it's going to cost a life or put the risk of someone, don't Excuse do me. business with them. Mm. Give them a give give the companies a price that you're going to need to one, employ the right amount of traffic controllers for the job, the right equipment that you're going to need to give them, whether you need a TMA or five traffic controllers. Work out that cost and give that to your client and say, this is what it's going to actually cost to do it safely. This is what it's going to cost if you want to do it in the shonky way. And if you do it in the shonky way, I can promise you, you're probably going to end up on our side. (laughs) There, and, And we won't take it down. We will leave it up there. We will make sure people see it and other people will share that post and they will see it. Um, And before you know it, you're, $200,000 $200,000 company that you took loans out from the bank and, you know, you got money pouring out more that you've got coming in because you can't find a client, it'll be your fault. It'll be your problem because you wanted to be shonky about it. So I hope that our page can spread awareness that people have had enough. Um, and that's the whole point of this shonky traffic control page is to make well, sure yeah. companies understand that. That if you're going to do some dodgy shit, you're going to end up on this page and you're not going to get mm. any more clients because uh, I'm sure out of the 560 people that are on there, there's probably a lot of managers, CEOs, directors that have already seen it and they're probably sharing it around saying, keep an eye on this page. Oh, you sure. Know? I know my company's already already found it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah, didn't they post it in one of your uh, PDAs? <laughs> they sent you a job, a uh, workforce job. <laughs> uh, yeah, Cranky is on site. <laughs> I think so, yeah. <laughs> that was a while ago. That was um, a while ago, yeah. Well, a couple of weeks ago, anyway. But um, and and they they found the podcast too. That I know my boss listens to it. So uh, hey, oh, yeah. R- hey Richie, <laughs> hey Richie, uh, Cranky wants a pay rise. I heard him saying that um, you you're not a good boss because you underpay him. Uh, he wants wants at least another five dollar pay rise. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna get a text message tomorrow morning, and he's just gonna <laughs> he's he's just gonna be like, you know, I'm not in charge of paying you, cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Now, while we're talking about this shonky side of it, did you see the post that I put up on the 24th of August where the reduced speed sign's on top with the workman symbol and the 40 down the bottom? Have you seen that post? I saw that one. What are your thoughts on that? I kind of like it, to be fair. Yes, it's not correct, but I I kind of like it. It sort of goes in sync because it's saying to the person at head height, 
reduce mm. your speed, mm. workman ahead, do 40. Instead um, of being reduce speed down the bottom and then you've got your workman and 40 there because nine times out of ten, they're just reading the 40 sign. But you've got this big red in white writing, reduce speed at the top. I, I kind of like it. I, I do like like the setup. Yes, it's not permanently correct, but yeah, mm. I I I kind of prefer it better than the other way. Okay, yeah, no. Look, um, when I saw that one, it kind of took me a while to figure out what they were going on about because here in in New South Wales, we don't really use those multi signs, but. Actually, I say we don't really. We straight up don't use them. But, <laughs> but um, we do symbolics here. <laughs> if you have to double up signs here, you it's it's law to put the um, the most important message first. Yeah. So in that so uh, and I mean by first I mean closest to the road. So in that instance, the forty speed limit is the most important message. Yeah. So over and that here, one that's is how we would to do the it. Road. So you've got the forty. You've got reduced speed up the top. <clears throat> Left hand side, you've got the orange mm, workman mm. symbol, and then you've got the forty. Now, how it is over here is that reduced speed's actually meant to be. It's meant to be flipped upside down. They've just put the legs in the wrong place and it's facing the wrong way. So you'd have yeah, reduced yeah. speed down the bottom. You'd have the forty closest to the road, and then your symbolic workman. So it's just completely swapped the other way around. Take the reduced speed, basically, put it on the bottom, and that's the way it's meant to be. Well, um, that's a bit weird. Yeah, it's it, it's just the way I guess main roads have said it's got to be. But mm. to be fair, if main roads, Perth, Australia, you're listening to this, have a look at our Shonky Traffic Controls page, 24th of August, and go suss it out and change your rulings on how a site should be set up and make this the new permanent. <laughs> like, I just, I can't, yeah, I prefer it. It looks better. Um, yeah, I mean, you're looking at that sign and it looks, it, the message is reduce speed, there are workers ahead, do 40. Yeah. That's the, yeah. That's the sentence. Yeah. And if you look at the 23rd of August from a De, uh, Stefan Webb, mm. that, that's pretty much how our signs have got to be set up. Symbolic 25, road worker head down the bottom. Now, the way he set it up, obviously he's run out of legs. So, shonky as shit. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> you made it to our site Whoever the gentleman is, you, you've made it to our website you, Okay, let's uh, Oh, there it is <laughs> Okay, 25 What the hell, it looks like that 25 has been Handwritten on that sign as well <laughs> Yeah I mean, uh, what's what's Seriously, what, what's with the What's with the graffiti all over that shit Yeah, yeah, tell me about it <laughs> Tell me, yeah, I think you're trying to have a laugh of that. Um, I want to give a <laughs> shout out. I believe this might be Scott Jeffrey Ewan. Ewan Unwin? Unwin? Unwin. 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 Yep. Uh, Scott Jeffrey Unwin. Uh, he posted with three of him, his boys and uh, doing the peace sign. The, these are the kinds of posts that we will chuck up. If you're just having a laugh, got your workmates want to take a selfie, and yeah, we we'll chuck those up as well. Uh, we'll approve that. Our page isn't just for shonky traffic controllers. Um, I'm going to allow a few, like if you want to have a laugh on there, go ahead. As long as it's not getting to the point of bullying or anything like that. Uh, mm. And I wanted to trial the business post where businesses could post about their traffic control company. On, on a certain day, but you know, I'm, it's still a trial. Let's see, see how it goes. Like, I'm yeah, just trying yeah. to make it a variety so it's not always whinging and bitching and complaining about the same <laughs> thing over and over and over again. Uh, and I did. I chucked a post up on the 22nd of August. Going to trial something, business post day, feel free to post your business. Now, there is a business that has posted, so I'm going to give a shout-out to Jonesy's Maintenance, Gardening, Mowing, Pressure Cleaning, and Turfing. Uh, I might give you a call if you are in Perth. Um, a gardening business I'm starting up. Gardening, obviously. Turfing and artificial grass, pressure cleaning, rubbish removal, rental, slash deceased estates, clear-outs. Um, mm. Yeah, shout-out to you, mate. You're the only one that's posted in there so far. I'm going to... 
give it a Sounds like yeah. a pretty good service to have around <laughs> if you live in Perth. That's it. Um, obviously, you got all these other shonky um, traffic control companies. July 24th. What is yep. that? Yep. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> is that you guys over there in Sydney or what? <laughs> What is it? I've gone back off the page. Let me have a look. Uh, so July 24, it was set up by Claire McIver. A um, bunch of cones around a truck <laughs> with workers. What looks to be a meant to be guiding traffic, but not even enough space to get down the left-hand side. July 24th. Geez, that's going back a bit. That's the 30th of July, so it yeah, will not be... Yeah, I got it. What a setup. Here we go. Um, <laughs> you know, you know what? I don't even think those guys. I don't think anyone is guiding cars around the truck. That it's just a guessing game, really. Oh, hundred percent. It's literally a guessing game. Like, when well done to those guys. You made it to our website. Hey, they're, they're just like, <laughs> hey, good luck, everybody else. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And I you go remember now. How, you remember how we were talking about that automatic cone truck, like to you know, for safety and all that sort of stuff. Mm, yeah. Kid you not, Main Road's bought one out. <laughs> not even joking. The minute we started talking about it, there was a post that popped up. See, someone's listening to us. We need to be making them pay for these ideas. Yeah, I know. It's literally someone is listening to what what's going on. Oh, <laughs> someone's listening to us on Twitch as well. <laughs> on Twitch? Hey, yeah. Twitch has got one. Cool. Twitch has right... got one. Yeah. Oh, beauty. Well, if that person's on Twitch, uh, whoever you are, send us a message on the chat. We can read it straight away. 100%. And we, so are, like, we, are, we are itching. We're, we're waiting for this. Oh, 100%. So that cone <laughs> truck that I was talking about as well um, mm. came out on July 30th, 2024. Um, the, the video did. And it ah, about okay. the new wheels. I'm going to check it up on the chunky traffic controls just for shits and giggles so then everyone can see what i'm talking about it's going to be a youtube link but yep. this is yep. what i think they should be using um to put out the cones of that now i would assume that these cone trucks are pretty intelligent and have a way of um ha- have a way of knowing what the spacing is and what kind of setup you need or whether there's still going to be a driver that is driving on the angle that the cone needs to be. I would. I would say that's what the case is. Yeah, because that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> but hey, yeah. let's see if they bring it out in Sydney, and we'll we'll go from there. But mm, uh, mm. yeah, speaking of uh, other shonky traffic control situations, <laughs> have you got any good cut new the ones? corners? Yeah, cut the old corners. Um, unlike our cover photo on shonky traffic controls of cutting corners. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a that's a new field of uh, cutting corners. So many saw horses. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, I I I've got so many stories on companies that cut corners it's a joke and it's not just safety but just in general to get the job done faster not necessarily Mm. safer Mm. Uh, you know it could be as simple as just from setting up a site or setting up a new vehicle on a mine site and and they're like oh don't worry about the paperwork or the pre-start just go it's like no, I'd rather do the pre-start. I'd rather know that my machine is going to work before I leave yeah, the yard. Yeah, yeah. Not get it out of the yard and then something goes wrong and I get asked, oh, by the way, did you do the pre-start? <laughs> it's not how I work. Because that's how, how they like to nail you, isn't it? They love to – that's the first oh, question they ask. Oh, did you end up doing it. a pre-start? Yeah. And it's just See, like don't use your mobile phone while driving on site, yet yeah, it's okay for the boss to do it. Now, what made me laugh on <laughs> one of my jobs, get this. Um, so the boss was picking up the new HSE advisor. Now, the HSE advisor, his wife is a superintendent of Rio Tinto. Yeah. <laughs> um, the HSE guy that was coming out to site is an ex-copper yeah, from the yeah. West Australian Police Force. Not only was he the copper for 20-plus years, he was the prosecutor for another 20 plus years. So he was the police <laughs> prosecutor. So he's pretty high up there. Pretty high up there. And he just decided, I've mm. had enough of the police force. I want to try something different for a while. Yeah. Was, yeah. 
So what does the boss do? Goes and picks him up from the airport, bang, straight on the mobile phone while driving. Driving one arm hand, <laughs> on the mobile phone, talking, going off it. And this bloke's just sitting there going, are you high? Like, are you serious? Do you, Did you not read the resume? You know what I was. You know who yeah, my wife yeah. is. Why would you do this? Like... The common sense just out the window <laughs> because it, he just believed his swinging dick is bigger than anyone else's. And, I mean, he treated everyone on site like shit. Yeah. He, he yeah. honestly believed his motto was one of – it's um, my sandpit, my rules. <laughs> like ah, that. one of those guys. Little dictators of, in their dictatorships. Yeah, little dick – we are dictators, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Just yeah. uh, you had to clear your throat there, didn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, man. Got, got a bit choked up there. So sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it was it's okay. We we all heard it. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just coughing. <laughs> <laughs> so so there is uh, stupidity in the workforce. There's people that have come out to my sites, and I was the HSE compliance officer. Came out to site, didn't sign in at the admin office. It was raining. No. What? Yeah, it was yeah. raining. Mm. Uh, and he was surveying concrete beams about 10 metres off the ground, 15 metres off the ground. Mm. Mm. The safety barriers of the concrete that were actually on the concrete so he could survey on the outside of it. Uh, used an EWP without the permit. Didn't have a harness on. <laughs> yeah. So he's working beyond the safety barriers on wet concrete without a harness, and basically if he had slipped, he was dead. Sure, yeah. Then I've gone running out there and told him to get the fuck down, um, asked mm. him for all his tickets. He didn't have tickets. He hadn't signed in. No one knew he was on site. Um, I wrote, had to write <laughs> a yeah. two-page yeah. report on the situation, photos, witnesses, the whole kit caboodle. I had to research codes and... Uh, uh, breaches of the uh, Work Health Safety Act in mm, my report. Mm. So that one situation, the amount of paperwork I had to do is just a joke. So That's essentially, true. he could have been any old bastard just yep. walking up to site and climbing onto a machine and then just being like, no, no, it's okay, I belong here. And, yeah. and you're like, well, prove that you belong here. And he's going, oh, I can't do that. Yeah. And, and that's because... the problem. I worked for that job for, you know, three days, four days. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want me after four days because I'd done my job. Because when you put a risk level on there, uh, it's the risk level would then, because mm. of the level it was, because it had the potential for fatality, uh, it would alert the board of directors of the company. Yeah. Uh, they sacked me, made me. Uh, took the report off me and one of the other safety people took over the report who weren't yeah. even involved in the situation. Um, so, it, you know, a lot of companies, what they want now is they scream health and safety. They scream, we want to do the right thing. If you see something, report it, rah, rah, rah. But if you noticed how no one reports anything, when yes. you go to a work site, no one wants to report it because the preach is there. They will preach safety till you're blue in the face because it's a compliance thing they have to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they don't actually want to hear it. They don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. They want the work health safety officer to go around and give a tick and a flick and say, good boy, good girl, thank you. Thank you very much. Just tick and flick. Thanks for your advice. We don't really want you to do your job. Just go around and shake hands and nod, nod and turn a blind eye to everything because we're going to continue doing what we're doing anyway, but mm. we have to have you on site. Now, if, you want to waste, uh, you know, eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars a year on a work health safety person to be a part of your crew, just mm. to tick a box to say you have one on site. Go right ahead. Uh, there is a lot of work health safety people that will do the tick and flick. I'm not one of them, uh, and they will close their eyes and just go around, shake hands, and take the paycheck and do nothing in the office and just tick the boxes that they want ticked. Um, because it's just a compliance thing. I find that that's a waste of money, and when something goes wrong, and it will go wrong, 
your head is the one that's going to be under the bus. Yeah, you're that's the right. one that's going to well, be in the shit. <laughs> they love to preach the, like you said, they love to preach the whole um, health and safety. Uh, you know, we're, we're all what do they call it now? Destination zero or something like that. Yeah, um, Kelly's wheels, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, then I found that a lot of companies, if you report something, they'll go, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine, but uh, you're the one that's going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're right. getting the sack. And when there's a um, big investigation, you you end up in coroner's court mm. uh, and you could end up before a HSCQ committee yeah. Because it can go higher than just your level. You know, if it's a big corporation you're dealing with, they have bigger health and safety people that come down and go, what have you been doing? You know, because they will throw you straight under the bus. They know what you've been doing because they told you to do it. But they're yeah, going to act exactly. dumb. They, they will act dumb when, it, when something goes severely wrong or a fatality happens. You will not have your ass covered as much as you think your boss is your friend and, you know, you do a great job for him for five you know, eight years, whatever, when that one thing goes wrong, that boss is going to deny all plausibility and go, well, I employed a work health safety guy. He's been here five, eight years. Like, what's he been doing? And then they're going to track what paperwork you have submitting, how lazy you have been, what issues were raised that you haven't acted on or tried to help or haven't talked about, what kind yeah. of safety measures have you implemented, what new policies have you looked at, what has been audited and looked at in terms of your health and safety policies. Everything mm, will mm. be scrutinized. So you can't cut corners and people will still do it. They'll still and tick that box. <laughs> again, that takes me back to my my old saying, the 11th commandment, cover thy ass. Yes. So everything you do, um, whether it's work health safety, traffic control, TMA, if you believe that the job you are doing is unsafe, record it, take a note mm -hmm. of it, take a photo of it, write down the time, dates, and everyone that was involved in that situation or yep. in the situation or what is happening, a description of what is happening, and take a photo of it. Right. Take a photo of your own report, send it to yourself even, and mm -hmm. also send it to your work health safety advisory, send it to your boss and say, this is what's going on. Cover your own ass because when they try to bring it back onto you that you were the problem, you said X, Y, Z is the problem, they can't do anything about it. And if they and, try, you know, mm. get them on the hook. Yeah. Uh, on top of everything else, if you receive an instruction that you think sounds kind of shifty, Question get them it. to get them to email it to you. Yeah. Get them to get to it in writing. It to Text it. Everyone's got a mobile. Basically, if you go, I don't mm -hmm. have mobile. No worries. You got a pen. Write it down. Sign it. Yep. Say that you want that instruction in writing with his signature, date, time, what his position is. And if he won't do it, then don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Simple. Because I would never get any of my crew to do a job that I wouldn't do myself. And if you wouldn't do the job yourself in a safe manner, then why ask your crew to do it? Yeah, simple that's that. right. Well, um, as much as we could talk about this for hours on end, we have oh, run out of time, Mr. Swagman. We always um, so run out of time. <laughs> always <let's>, talking shit. <laughs> let's spend the last 15 minutes telling these people who sh who's shit to buy. Yeah. Um, the best one I can say is on track meals. I've got their meals. I'm taking yep. them prospecting with me. Um, I am also going camping soon. I'm taking the family. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And on track meals by far. I've had a few of their meals out of the pack. I've only got seven or eight that I can do, and I'm already munching away at it. Um, <laughs> and that's on-track meals. So good. So yeah, good. you're liking them. I'm glad you're liking them. I love them. They're great. Yeah. They're, such, they're such a good way to, um, to complement the lunchbox, especially yeah, if you're yeah. like me and you get sent out to a Random lot of emer jobs. emergency <laughs> jobs that may or may not go to 12 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, you know. Yeah, you're gonna want that hot dinner, and on track meals will supply you with that. And all so you that's need is a um, bottle of water to heat it up. Doesn't necessarily have to be water. <laughs> well, oh, that that's... is true. <laughs> <laughs> I I wouldn't want to think what the taste would be like, but <laughs> fuck fuck the taste. What about the smell? <laughs> oh, it just has to be liquid form. Yeah, that's so. it. <laughs> um. 
So that's on trackmeals.com.au forward slash in the zone and then use the um, the promo code in the zone ten for a ten percent discount, which when you're spending twenty percent <laughs> when you go on their website and they're already I, I think, promo. I think their promo's ended now, but it's oh, yeah, you know, oh. go there go there and find out. Yeah, go there, find out. They're always running yeah. promos. They're all pretty good. So who else do we have? We mentioned Swag at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, so we've got Swag HQ that's uh, run by Quinton Defoe. Who he, we will be talking to at some point. Who we will be talking to at some point. Unfortunately, he is with his family on <laughs> Father's Day. He was going to try and make it back for our recording today. I did send him a link just in case he could make it. Um, unfortunately, he is unable to make it at, at this stage, and we're now at the end mm-hmm. of the show. So, um, swag is someone with a goal. So, if you're a small business, you're trying to get, trying to figure out how to create more content, um, trying to develop your business practice, make it better than what it already is, yeah, um, or just want to follow him on his on his journey because you love what he's doing on what he's posting now he's got multiple channels on facebook youtube instagram which you can type in swag headquarters or swag hq to come up um, or you can contact the show directly and we'll give you the link to all the socials uh the other sponsor that we have sorry i just went completely mind <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh is dizzy licious um, which i believe is one of your friends yeah, yeah, you can find her on Instagram. I think she said she's setting up a website, but I haven't seen her since then, so I don't actually know what the website is. Um, yeah, but find her on Instagram, Dizzy, and then half of the word delicious. It's so delicious. it's just Dizzylicious. Um, and she's on this side of the country in, in Sydney. She makes cakes and cupcakes and just all sorts of customized baked goods. Um, they're not bad either. They're pretty fucking good. And the other one is Friends of the Show, who we've mentioned a few times now, and we will be joining the American podcast Three-Wheeled Bicycle uh, at some point. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, They are good friends of the show. They listen to our show. We listen to their show. They're consistently a bunch of blokes who like to get together and uh, talk the same amount of shit we're talking. Except- I was going to say, just like us, they sit, they tell you that the show has a topic and then they'll mention the topic like three times and the rest of the show is just <laughs> shit talk. It, it literally becomes shit talk <laughs> or, or what they've been doing during the week and um, or about the kids. Or mm-hmm. and There's a lot that happens over there. It's crazy because it's so much more than what happens here in Australia. Like I feel like America has abundance of content because they just have so much that goes on that they've got 20 times more news channels than what we've got. We've got, what, Channel 7, Channel 9, ABC, yeah, Channel 10. Yeah. They've got, like, CNN, 60 Minutes, uh, you know, this channel, that <laughs> channel, Fox Fox News, and, you know, you go to one of their press conferences, CNN and, you know, NNTV, and it's like, how many, how many news outlets do you need to, yeah, to yeah, run yeah. over? It is you wouldn't You wouldn't want to be epileptic in that room. That it just, no, the, you know, the no. camera flashes would just be like a constant strobe light going off. No, and their election at the moment, I don't know what's going to happen, but if it's anything like the Simpsons, yeah. it's going to be Camilla Harris. So I, I'm already calling it. I think Donald <laughs> Trump's already lost. I'm, I'm going to say it now. Camilla Harris has it. The Simpsons predicted it. Donald, just drop out. You've already lost. It's already been predicted for the win. Hmm. <laughs> I, I want to see him win for the shits and giggles of the aftermath of what will happen, but I'm almost certain Camilla's got it in the bag. You know what? I think just just for the sake of the Simpsons being right, people are going to vote for her. They're oh, going to be like, hell yeah. All yeah, right. They want to see it. They want to see it happen. The uh, Simpsons manipulating history again. <laughs> they, and they're so good at it. Like, how many times have the Simpsons predicted history? If we actually look at those stats, we'll probably put it in the next show, of how many times the Simpsons have predicted history. Oh, <laughs> I man. Think, I, I believe <laughs> there's about 20, 50, 100 different situations that the Simpsons have actually predicted that have come through. Uh, either that guy's a time traveler or he's really good at telling the future. No, um, no. he did explain how he does it, but anyway, we will we'll uh, leave, it at that. leave it at that. Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in, and definitely thank you, everyone, for listening. You'll be able to find our podcast um, 
live on just about every podcast platform. Yeah, uh, Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, after, Instagram, Twitch. <laughs> yep, yep. After 5.30 tomorrow morning. So I I have them set to upload at 5.30, but, um, you know, some of them are a little bit later. Yeah. All righty, guys. Take it easy. Swagman and Cranky. We are outie. All righty. All right, that was fun. I hope that works. I was just.